everyone. Welcome to Now and Them. I'm your host, Julia Jorze Silverberg, and I'm here with my amazing co-host, Andres Medina. And this is our monthly live show where we bring you behind the keyboard to bring you breaking news, tips, and tools really to help you up your digital marketing game, all while having a lot of fun, because our goal is to be a sounding board and to just remind you that you've got a friend in the world of social media, because things change really quickly, and we want you to know that you are not alone. So we like to think of this as a monthly laugh and learn. So are you excited for this month's show, Andreas? Andreas, you're muted. Thank you so much for that. So yes, I was just saying that I'm excited because we're going to be talking about LinkedIn creator mode. And to be honest, I have not taken a deep dive into it and I didn't want to. I wanted it to learn from Kate, you know, I, I wanted to have genuine questions for her. So um, yeah, I'm excited for today's show. Me too. I am really excited. As Andreas said, we're going to talk about creator mode with Kate Payne. Kate is a social media week line, a speaker, and she's really going to share what you need to know about creator mode. She's going to share about the functionality, how you can get access to creator mode and why it will or maybe not make sense for you. So before we dive into that, Andreas, I want to know what is your favorite or your least favorite thing about LinkedIn? So my favorite thing, I'll say that how professional it is, like it's that platform that when you think about professionalism or, or creating connections, that's where you would go um, in terms of a professional setting. What I don't like is that for businesses, they, they must have a face, I feel like, to be successful on LinkedIn. Like you can't just hide behind your logo. Yep. And businesses need to like um, just bear with the process and collaborate, work together. So it's successful. So yeah, that's, that's a, sorry, I lost my train of thought here. You're so totally can, good. There's so much that you guys can, you can do with LinkedIn. So we are really excited to have Kate on because Kate is an expert when it comes to all things LinkedIn. So before we bring Kate on, let's dive into some news. So our first news story of the week, it's been a big week also in the social media world. So we're going to start off with some Facebook news. Firstly, there it, a lot's happening over at Meta. Meta's making some major layoffs, but in some more positive news, they had a creator week at Meta the other week, and they announced some new features that are coming for creators, which is super exciting. The most exciting, I think, is the expanded monetization opportunities, as well as a few new tools that are going to facilitate the creation and selling of NFTs. So in one of those announcements was the rollout of subscriptions. So this is one of a new feature, like this is one of the many new features that Meta has rolled out for creators that want to monetize. So what subscriptions really means is Creators with more than 10,000 followers are now able to create a subscription where their followers can pay anywhere from 99 cents to $99 a month. The rate is up to the creator. And what it gets the people who subscribe is exclusive access to content. And specifically in Instagram, I actually happened to subscribe to one creator that I really like. And what happens when you do that is a new tab opens up in the Instagram grid that is literally just a tab for content for subscribers. So it's a super cool way for creators to monetize, for people to get more exclusive access, behind the scenes stuff from their favorite creators. So I am super excited about this Facebook news um, and because it's with Instagram as well. So what do you think about this, Andreas? You're muted again, my friend. Hmm. I can't hear. Okay, we're having a little technical difficulty. So 
we're not able to hear Andreas, so we're gonna we're gonna keep on rolling, and hopefully he'll be able to join us here in a, a second. Andreas, definitely g give me some kind of sign if you get back in and you wanna. I test think good. Did I figure it out? Yeah, you're awesome. Somehow I, I took off my AirPods because they disconnected somehow. Yeah, and bro. The, you got I had it. To, like turn it off. They were still connected while they were in the case. So Apple figured this out. Um, but meta news, yeah, I, I just I'm just excited. I get like I get excited when I hear news from Meta. Um, I don't get as excited when I see that you must pay to get like exclusive content, you know. Um, but I want to see all of these roll out. I want to see what impact he has in other brands and then start comparing how would this benefit um, to my clients. Um, so really excited about that. Um, moving over, I have TikTok news. So TikTok has launched the TikTok Academy, which is like an educational hop program for marketers um, with free video courses on how to best use the app for marketing. Um, so at the end of each module, uh, you get a batch that you can display on your profile, your website, and even your LinkedIn profile now. So this is a no-brainer future to tap in, like for brands, marketers, because the platform is growing out, like it's growing so quick. So it's better to get started as soon as possible. Better late than never, you know? So yeah, what do you think about that? I think this is awesome. I think that there are brands that are still fearful right now about dipping their toes into TikTok. I think that they feel a little overwhelmed. And the fact that TikTok has now created this educational hub so that people can start to see what it actually looks like to create successful short form content for their brand. I think this is awesome. So if you have not started to make TikToks for your business, this is the thing for you to check out. You definitely want to check out this new um, TikTok Academy so that you can really start to get a real look at what it would look like in the real world to create short form content because it's not just trending dances. There's a lot that you can do as a brand on TikTok. So definitely worth checking out. So it's our, exactly, it's free. It's, it's a no brainer. So um, the next news story that we have for you is Instagram news. And I am very excited about this for individuals, for brands, for everybody, because Instagram is rolling out in-app post scheduling tools to all professional accounts. The post scheduling option is going to let you schedule photos, carousels, and reels inside of Instagram right where you would you know put your captions in the advanced settings button you're going to be able to schedule your content right in instagram and we all know that instagram doesn't love third-party tools so this is huge to being able to not have to feel like you have to post at the exact optimal time now you can pre-schedule right in the app you don't have to worry about maybe losing out on views or engagement because you're using a third-party tool i'm just super excited about this what do you think andreas I'm a huge fan of posting natively on Instagram specifically. For some reason, I just feel like the the app just shares your content because you took the time to like fill out every single detail of the post, um, being either location, tagging someone. I feel like that's gonna be easier now that you can schedule. So definitely excited about this one. Can't wait to try it out. Our next news article, LinkedIn. So. As more companies work to boost retention rates and recruitment efforts, LinkedIn is enhancing their tools to help facilitate internal promotion um, and movement within a, like a company. So this ideally this will look, let's say for example, that you have your business and you have a, an opening and this will probably work better for bigger businesses. I'm talking about probably 40 or more employees if you don't know what big is considered. But, but um, Yes, if you have an opening, you can see who is the perfect candidate for a promotion for that like position. So that's gonna be super interesting. Um, definitely something that would help both the employer and the employees in the future. Yeah, I think that think? this this is an incredible feature. The fact that LinkedIn is gonna have this functionality so that employers can be like notified if they have employees internally that make for a good fit for a role that they have is just fantastic. I think the easier you can make it for an employer to promote internally 
it saves costs for the employer. It helps with morale. Like it's going to make then the rest of the team work harder if they're seeing their fellow teammates get promotions and things like that. So I think this is a great functionality. And LinkedIn is the platform to roll it out because that's the place where people are going of any social media platform to look for a job, to talk about their job. So I think, <laughs> can I transfer to Puerto Rico? Yeah, sign me up. It is about to be winter in Buffalo and I'm not ready for it. So I am all about the transfer. And I just want to shout out our amazing now teammates. Thank you guys so much for watching the show. I think I saw Eric. I saw Kara. I saw Joanna. I think I see Monica, um, Jacqueline. We, we've just, we've got the best people tuning in. You guys are amazing. Thank you for tuning in. We appreciate you so, so much. So before we bring our amazing guest on for this month, I want to tell you guys our last news story, which is Twitter. And I had this new story lined up. I was going to tell you guys about like the, the new official gray check mark and the blue check mark, and you can buy verification. But things are changing so quickly right now as it relates to Twitter. Elon Musk has taken over. And so all I'm going to say as it relates to Twitter is you definitely just need to check out what's happening. Like keep your finger on the pulse because there are going to be new features and functionality rolled out. Twitter laid off a whole bunch of employees. So what that then means for the platform, like I just think that it there's a big TBD. And we all know in the social media world, we are constantly needing to kind of stay ready and stay nimble and be adaptable. So Twitter is definitely the place where we need to be ready to be the most adaptable because it's it's constantly changing quite literally by the minute. So I just think it's something we got to keep our eyes on. Agreed. Yeah, definitely. I I haven't spent like I, I the time I spend on Twitter is for work. I don't go voluntarily personal like Twitter. I don't usually tweet this week. I've been active because I have to, I have to stay up to date and yeah, just want to see what, where, where everything's going to end. Let us know in the comments. What do you think is going to happen? Yes, it, it really is an unhinged, uh, th there's a lot of unhinged stuff happening. So um, I bet that's a great comment, Joanna. So let's do some shout outs. This is the time of the show where we like to shine a light, give some shout outs. So we want you guys to chime in. If you have something that you're celebrating, if you're just proud of yourself, maybe you accomplished something, you got a project done, maybe you got a new puppy, whatever it is, we want to know. So let us know in the comments because we have a few shout outs. We have Gabe and Amber who are both celebrating their birthdays at the end of the month. So happy almost right. birthday. Gabe and Amber. Gabe is new on our team. So Gabe, it's your first now birthday. We're so excited to celebrate you. And Amber, we literally do not know what we would do without you. So we are so happy that you guys are celebrating your birthdays. And we are celebrating you guys for just tuning in because you guys, we are just so excited for Social Media Week Lima. Like we're really getting ready to end the year, which means we're thinking about 2023. And all we can think about is Social Media Week Lima because it is our favorite time of the year. We get to hug you guys. We get to learn together, laugh together. It's going to be so much fun. But rather than me just go on and on and on and tell you how great it is, I figure we would just watch a video. So Chad, will you roll it? to shrink the distance between us and our customer? How can we show up to provide better experiences? What does that look like? Out here, the competition, and you can grow your brand. Because the relationships are the currency of business, and experiences are the transactions that we're exchanging. How are we making people feel? How are we building relationships with them?
That is such a good hype video. We are so excited. And Kate is here with us. We've all got our Hooray. social media. <laughs> We've got our social media week lima bobbleheads. Kate is matching. You guys look at that. No, match. I didn't plan that, but it here we are. <laughs> on point. Kate's Kate gets a million bucket list points. All my now teammates will get that. <laughs> million bucket list points for the matching. Um, and before we dive into questions with you, Kate, I want to let our audience know who you are because you have a very impressive bio because Kate, you guys, is the founder and CEO of Standing Out Online. She helps executive and executives and entrepreneurs stand out online so they become a recognized authority in the marketplace and a respected asset to their company and clients. She uses her journalism and marketing skills to tease out her clients' compelling stories and to help her clients position themselves as experts or thought leaders, both on and offline. Discovering an individual story makes her expertise uncommon in the world of online personal promotion. She's a LinkedIn expert and uses the tool as a powerful personal branding platform. She also speaks at national marketing conferences about personal branding strategies and social media, and she teaches people how to leverage LinkedIn to corporate sales and marketing teams. Kate, I am so, so happy to have you I'm here. I'm so excited to be with you both. Thank you again for having me. Oh, uh, we are. It's a no brainer to have you. You are wonderful. You know so much about LinkedIn. You blew everyone away at Social Media Week Lima 2022. So we were like, we have to have her on the live show so that she can share her expertise about creator mode because Andreas and I were talking and we're like, we honestly don't think that we've tapped into this functionality so much. So we need to dive into it. But before we dive into it, I want you to just like start me off with how did you even get into this industry? What drove you into marketing in the first place? Well, um, way back when, like literally when I was in junior high school, remember when we used to call it junior high school? <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually wanted to be a broadcast journalist and I, I was totally like a news geek and I would watch like 60 minutes with my dad. And I was like, you know what? I want to be, this was back in the eighties. So I'm really dating myself. Um, I wanted to be like the next Diane Sawyer. So fast forward, I ended up going to college in New York city and I was I'm from Vermont. And so um, I ended up getting an internship at the CBS Evening News. And um, it was an extraordinary experience. I learned a lot about, you know, interviewing and, you know, this is all way before digital video and the internet and all of that stuff. And, um, and then I ended up coming back to Vermont. Um, New York was great for school, not where I wanted to live. And then I um, started working in public relations. And really what was cool about where I worked is I always would work for like a mission driven organization whether it was a corporate or, or a nonprofit, I didn't want to just be a PR spin doctor. Um, I wanted to get into the stories and um, to talk about impact. And so uh, fast forward, worked in marketing and PR for a while. And then I actually took on a part-time role as um, um, an executive director for a women's entrepreneurial networking association in, in New England. And um, that's when I really got into wanting to help women who either had a product or service to sell how they could start to really promote themselves. And by then, of course, the internet was out. And so I just kind of got into that. And then LinkedIn just became a favorite platform because it could be so much more than a job seeking tool. Yeah. Oh, I love that. That's And you say it best at the end, it really is so much more than just a job seeking tool. I mean, there's so much that you can be doing to position yourself as an expert, to be contributing to communities, to be meeting like-minded people, fellow experts. So I know you're going to tell us a lot about how to do that. Um, yes. But I want to know, what are you most passionate about when it comes to digital marketing and social media and personal branding? Like you have an expertise in this field. So what gets you the most excited when it comes to helping people with this work? I like to try to help people really with with like how they want to get how do they want to amplify their reach online how do they want to amplify their visibility and you know there as we all know and you guys know it even more than me there is so much noise out there it's like how do we really stand out anymore because everybody's trying to do something and um story is one thing that i think is what makes you unique so even though you might define what your personal brand is what you how you want to position yourself online for your expertise and your thought leadership um, but if you can bring in a component of your story into your professional story and expertise you make connection with people and and connection is what builds trust 
And so, you know, are you going to be all things to all people? No. But if whatever your product or service is, then um, if you share your story, you make yourself relatable to, to your expertise and people can then, you know, make that connection. I love that. And it's stories really are so powerful because they tap into emotions. And that yeah. is what's so memorable, right? Is right. And people get so nervous, I think, to be vulnerable and kind of share more of that personal side. But like you said, that's how we really get to know people. And we do business with people that we know, like, and trust. So absolutely, you, you got to start to really flip your mindset so that you understand the power of story. So why is LinkedIn, Kate, the platform that you really started to gravitate towards? Well, I think it's just kind of goes back to like my background of, of marketing and PR and, and all of that. It's just like it was the platform where you can um, really try to use LinkedIn in ways that maybe people haven't considered. So whenever you can do something a little different, then, you know, it's fresh. Right. And it's new. Um, and so I still think that there's a lot of people on LinkedIn still doing like the generic. I've been in the such and such industry for blah, blah, blah. You know, and I do this and I do that. So what I do when I work with my clients is I do, I try to find what I call like their slice of life story, like a little story nugget and incorporate that into the beginning of their about section. So that when somebody arrives on your, on your page and they read your about, you've got to use something that captivates their attention right out of the boat. If you say I've been in the such, if I've been a CPA for 15 years, that's just blah, you know? I mean, that's what everybody else is doing. So story can really hook your reader in to want to learn more about you. And I just feel that since LinkedIn also still gets so much tremendous organic reach, that there's still such great opportunity there for people. Um, that's, you know, unless you pay for a premium subscription, it's free, you know, so you can still get really great reach there. And you have to be committed to the process, just like we all say with with co with content, you've got to be committed to that. Um, and, and content out that is, um, you know, educational, informative, and maybe even a little entertaining. <laughs> I love that. I think LinkedIn has become, I think since the pandemic, I think LinkedIn's become a little bit more um, a allowing for more authenticity of oneself. So it's not just about the job title, like you're more than your job title. You're a whole person. And um, when you can take that little bit of story about maybe why you got into what you do, tie it into your professional story, then you're, you're making connection. I love that. That's so powerful and so true. Did you have Sorry, I, I, was, I thought I lost my audio for a minute again. I wanted to like, um, I didn't want to interrupt you if you were talking and my, my internet connection is lagging here. Um, but I do have uh, some questions for you. And my first question is, and I had this at the beginning of the show, what's creator mode? <laughs> what's included? What do you expect out of it? <laughs> Excellent question. So creator mode is basically like a setting. Um, when LinkedIn first rolled it out about, gosh, a year and a half, two years ago, it was like a giant nothing burger. Um, when you and, and they didn't really put out much about it. They were just like, we're creating creator mode so that people who consider themselves LinkedIn creators, um, sort of what I call power users of LinkedIn, to get more reach. So when it first came out, all they would let you do is create five hashtags that would show up at the very top of your personal profile page under your name and headline. But And even to this day, they're there, but you can't even freaking click on them. <laughs> you know, it's not like you can click on the hashtag and take you to a hashtag feed, although LinkedIn has a hashtag feed, but you have to use search to get to it. So um, when it first came out, you know, they were talking about it. We were all excited. And I'm like, really? Five hashtags? That's it? <laughs> um, and so it's expanded so much more. And it's basically what LinkedIn will tell you, link, what, what LinkedIn corporate will tell you, is that if you consider yourself a LinkedIn creator, then your content that you post is going to be served up more to, to your contacts um, because you're because you've turned creator mode on. So it's really literally a toggle switch where you can turn it on. And um, now what you still can do is obviously put in your hashtags, but more importantly, it's giving you access to some really great uh, tools to do to have targeted traction. So it's giving you instant access to LinkedIn Live, which is LinkedIn live streaming, LinkedIn newsletters, 
And what's brand new in the last couple of months is now LinkedIn social audio, which is basically a clubhouse, but it's on LinkedIn and it's just called LinkedIn audio. And so getting those tools and using them and figuring out kind of a plan for them is, is the, is the biggest bonus to creator mode, because then you can have access to these tools that give you very targeted traction. Okay, sweet. Did, I feel like I want to turn it on now, to be honest. <laughs> um, so how do I know whether like this feature is right for me or not? Such a good question. It's not, it's not for everybody. Um, one of the things that people don't like about creator mode is that when you literally turn it on, it takes that original connect button that you had at the top of your profile and changes it to a follow button. And so some people don't want to turn it on because they don't want to lose that connect button. And there's nothing, there's no workaround for that. So people still want to make those like meaningful connections where you invite someone to connect and then you're a first level connection, right? Um, but follow is, you know, becoming more popular because a lot of times people don't want to send out the traditional connection request. Um, and so they can just follow somebody. And again, LinkedIn says, once you follow them, you'll see their stuff, but, um, you're not always seeing their stuff. Um, LinkedIn's always still, you know, not serving up what they say. So I kind of take that with a little bit of a grain of salt. And, um, there is a workaround so that if somebody has the follow button, um, there's literally a button next to it that says more. And if you click on that, a little drop down shows up and you can select connect. So you can still create those connections. Now what LinkedIn does is they take your number of connections and your number of followers and they add it all up. And that's the number you see on someone's profile. So if it says however thousand connections, it's a combination of connections and followers. Okay. So, so if people still want to have that connect button, then you might not want to turn it on. If you turn it on, then you get access to all those tools. And then that's where you can really, that's where the rubber can hit the road, as they say. Sweet. And this feature is free, right? There's no it other. is free. Absolutely. The other cool thing is you can actually turn it on and off. So if you turn it on and you set it up um, and you set up your hashtags and all that, if you want, you can, you can turn it off and it'll just go back to the way it was with the connect button and everything. Um, the other thing that happens too, when you turn it on is your um, featured section, if you have one, and your activity section moves up underneath the introduction card and your about section gets bumped down. So that's another kind of change to the actual personal profile. So, and if people are not gonna be using LinkedIn as a sort of a power user or content creator, then maybe they maybe creator mode isn't really something you need. If you're not gonna do live video or social audio, like creating it or newsletters, then it may not be for you. But People who are finding, um, turning it on and losing those tools are finding that it's getting them really more targeted traction. Sweet. I like all that. Um, I do have one question. It's not on the script, but I do. I'm very curious. So I just want to clarify, are these available for business pages as well? Uh, as far as I know, no. Um, it's just on personal profile pages. Whether or not it's coming to company pages sort of remains to be seen. You know, I do a lot of reading on the platform and about the platform, I should say. And um, there are there are some tools that they're they're giving people like that are a creator mode tool, but they're only giving like a piece of it to a company page. Um, we understand that LinkedIn's really trying to upgrade the company page experience, especially for smaller businesses who have created company pages, you know, beyond the Apples and the Nikes of the world. Um, but there's like you can get LinkedIn newsletters, for example, on a company page, but there's not an actual creator mode setting on a company page. Okay, that makes a yeah. lot of sense. Well, that's about all I question. I think you clarify everything, every question I had. I'm definitely gonna dive into the creator mode just to test it out. Why not? Yeah. It's free. I can turn it back off if I don't need it. Um, right. So definitely, I'm inviting all of our viewers right now. Try it out. Please, next show, let us know how it went. <laughs> exactly. well, LinkedIn Live is a huge bonus. Being yeah. Because before, link, before creator mode, if you wanted to do LinkedIn live streaming video, you had to actually apply to LinkedIn. You had to fill out an application wow. to be approved to get LinkedIn Live. Wow. Um, yeah. so, so now it's just available and you don't have to go through that whole annoying approval vetting process. Yeah. So. 
This is amazing. I think it's definitely worth, especially because you mentioned that people can turn it on and off. It seems like a no brainer to just turn it on and at least start to explore, poke around, see what you have access to, see how you might use these features for yourself. And if it doesn't seem to make sense, you can always go back and turn it off. But Great. yeah, seems like a no brainer. So Kate, thank you so much for sharing all about creator mode so that we can really feel empowered and excited to just turn it on and start to dive into this whole suite of tools that we get access to literally for free. So yeah, my pleasure. I'm, I'm super excited. Well, Andres and I will be letting you know what we think about it once we end up diving in, probably like tomorrow after this episode. So let's play some games and have fun. Okay. So we like to play a game called This or That which is a rapid fire question style game where I basically ask you two things and you tell me what you'd prefer. Okay. Are you ready? I am so ready. Okay. Lake or ocean? Lake. Sweet or savory? Sweet. Road trip or flying? Ooh, road trip. Would you rather be able to talk to animals or breathe underwater? <laughs> uh, talk to animals. Sweet. Especially my little dog. I, I, I mean, same. Waffles or pancakes? Pancakes with Vermont maple syrup. I, that's literally, I knew. That's why I had to include My sons it. have a maple sugaring operation in Vermont. So, you know. I, I had to give a nod to maple syrup. I know. I know you're a maple syrup lady. I am. Um, and honestly, this is the first time that we've played now and then with a guest where our guest answers were are all of my same answers. Oh, wow. Good so mind. That I know. I'm super excited about that. That's never happened. We're 14 episodes in, and this is the first time. So Kate Payne, you are my kind of people. Woo! My kind of people. So um, now we're gonna we're gonna ask you some just some kind of get to know you questions. These are okay. just fun questions that we've thought of that we just want to ask you, and as a way to get to know you, and also as a way to maybe inspire our audience to do something different, try something different, and just maybe broaden their perspective. So our first question is: What's the best lesson that you've learned this year, and why? Oh boy. Um... Oh boy. <laughs> Ask it again. I've got a I got a noodle on that one. Honestly, it's good that it's good that you asked because it looks like we're frozen here from a tech standpoint. So I'm oh. happy to ask it again and cross my fingers and hope that the tech gods just I'll reboot us too. and you know, I'm sending out my little witchy energy. Andres looks better in this in the screen grab than you yeah, and Julia. My can hear us yeah let us know in the comments if you can hear us oh look we're at that back. amazing okay so we're gonna just restart this we gave you a few extra seconds we put we, we restarted the clock the time has been reset and what is the best lesson kate that you have learned this year and why well, there's been several. I'm going to focus on a business one. Um, so one of the things that I work on with my clients is teaching them how to sort of wash, rinse, and repeat with their content, how to repurpose, how to co-create, which we talked about in Lima. Um, and so I actually finally took my own advice and I'm taking my Coffee with Kate webcast and I'm actually creating a podcast because there's just no better way to get repetition and saturation. And I'm in the process of starting it and I think it's going to be out next month. Oh, that's so awesome. Yeah. I am so happy to hear that. You guys make a note to make sure that you tune in when Kate launches her podcast. We will be shouting about it from the rooftop. So we'll be sure to let you know. Kate, please do. I make will. Sure you, make sure you email me and I will make sure that we let our audience know that that is launched. I'm so happy for you. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, it's exciting. It is exciting. What a great way to end the year. Yes, Ending the year strong. I love to see it. So my next question, do you have a nickname that we might surprise, we might be surprised to know? Um, well, I grew up, so I'm actually, my legal name is Catherine. I grew up as Katie 
And um, by the time I went off to college, I was always like, oh, little Katie, I don't want to be called that because I felt like I was five. <laughs> so I went off to college and I was Kate because it sounded <laughs> so much more professional. So I don't know if it's surprising, but it, what's interesting though, is I grew up in a small town in Vermont. I grew up in Stowe, which is a big ski, which is a ski resort town. And when friends of mine would come visit from other places who knew me as Kate, and we'd be out and about in my small town running into people I'd known for all my life, they would be like, that person must have known you before you went to college because they still call you Katie. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I love that. I have a dear friend, Katie, and it's so funny. I would have not, I, I wouldn't have necessarily thought of you as a Katie. So that's a yeah, little fun yeah, I'm fact. Not a Katie. George, a fun fact said, George said, love Stowe. Woohoo for Stowe. Yeah, George OG is a big snowboarder also. Okay. So he's like. Alchemist. Yes. <laughs> Hetty Topper. I love this. This is the beauty of live, guys. Chime in if you if you guys have favorite places, put them in the comments. Let Kate chime in with maybe she knows them. Um, and my last question for you, Kate, is if you could interview anyone, dead or alive, who would it be? And Robin why? Williams. Oh, that you had that locked oh and God. loaded. I, you know, I was never been like a celebrity fan type, but I freaking loved Robin Williams from like when he started on Mark and Mindy. I just, he's a comic genius. I used to try to watch everything he did and said. And I was, I was like really tragically sad when, um, when he, when he passed and ended his life. Cause I just, one of my things was like someday, somehow I'm going to be at a show, but I just think he's not only is he just really, really tremendously funny. He's really smart. And um, he just, I think he'd be a fascinating person to interview. He'd also be one of the hardest people to interview. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Patch Williams. Oh my God. I love that movie. <laughs> yeah. You guys let us know your favorite Robin Williams movies also yeah. in the comments below. I mean, I'll be honest. I, I mean, this is obviously not his best movie, but I do love Jumanji. I, and yeah. I always love Jumanji. Yep. It was good. <laughs> he played so many different roles. I mean, he was such an incredible talent. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you ever saw it. it was years ago, years ago on 60 Minutes. His mentor had been Jonathan Winters, who was a really well-known comedian back in like the 70s and stuff. And they did a segment with Mike Wallace on 60 Minutes and they were playing tennis on a tennis court. It was like one of the funniest things I've ever seen. It was like 45 <laughs> minutes of the two of them doing improv and impersonations. It was just like rapid fire. Um, oh, Mrs. Really, Doubtfire. Oh, yeah, Mrs. Doubtfire. Oh, that's, that's an awesome one. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that might be that might be one of the best. That's a great. Yeah, you, that's definitely something that I've got a YouTube yeah. later. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot yeah, to remember. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody can hear Chad and he's talking. Exactly. No, we're all listening to Chad. We're listening to Chad's commentary. Wait, Jonathan Winters used to make guest hears. appearances on Mork and Mindy. <laughs> oh, it was great. Everyone hears a, an awkward silence in the back. <laughs> Chad is talking to us, giving his opinion on Robin Williams in the movies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next question. Next get to know you question, uh, Kate. Now, um, what's the dinner of your dreams? A 10 ounce filet mignon with Bernays sauce, medium rare, along with a main lobster tail and mashed potatoes. <laughs> oh my God, now I'm starving. <laughs> I'm starving now. I, got, I mean, I'm trying not to eat as much meat, but I'm yeah, I that's that. the only time I ever have. Is it's got to be a really good fillet. See, is there any place in specific that you like to go for your fillet mignon? Well, I was recently traveling on business um, in Colorado, and I went to a fabulous place in Colorado Springs called the Famous Steakhouse, and um, it's probably one of the best fillet mignon I've ever had. Mm. It was like last list. two weeks ago. <laughs> I'm going to put it on my list to visit. I, I got to try it now. I'm going to just take that trip to taste it. <laughs> um, do you have a favorite color? And if so, why? I'm going to get blue. <laughs> blue, because it's all in my branding. <laughs> I, oh, I love it. Blue, blue, blue. All different blue. shades. Well, one thing about us, Kate, I mean, I love that your colors were on point. Andres and I try to color Joanna. coordinate when we have the show. So today was gray. This month was gray month. <laughs> but we tend to try and color coordinate. So we should have reached out to you and we could have gone with blue. Well, so. it's because you're in Buffalo. And, and since I'm from the Northeast, November is like the grayest. Ugh. 
you know, month in. Uh. We, although I will say Buffalo like broke some records in November already. We had like a 70 degree day last yep. week. So I am, I am not complaining. I think people assume because I live in Buffalo, I like, like the cold and I'm like, no, I just barely tolerate it. Just Joanna says she's wearing blue. All right, Joanna. I know yeah. um, it was 70 in Vermont last week. I mean, that's like, uh, that's just, it doesn't happen very often. It's unheard of. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's so wild. Oh, I love, I love oh, all the restaurant of the Stowe Auto Road has great food. It does. Wow. George, we need to, we need to connect sometime. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Jo OG, make sure that you and Kate get connected. I mean, Joanne has been chiming in in the comments saying she loves how you've got your answers locked and loaded. And um, Joanna and I, and I had no idea you were going to ask me these. I know. And I'm loving your answers. <laughs> Joanna. Joanna should have told us to wear blue on dress. Yeah. Next time, Joanna, if you could get on that, that would be really good. <laughs> um, but you guys make sure if you are watching this and you've just been watching and not chiming in in the comments, make sure to chime in in the comments because we've got a giveaway coming up. But before we do that, I've got one last question, Andreas, it's for you. And I want to know what are you most looking forward to this holiday season? Eating. Wait, are you asking That's me or I'm Andres? Andreas, but okay. also you, I want to know from you after. I, I'm going to eat. I don't know if because I'm thinking of the filet mignon right now, but the holiday season, holiday season here in Puerto Rico, um, there's a lot of food that gets cooked in this specific time of the year. So um, can't wait to start eating all the pasteles and uh, mm. arroz con gandules and all that stuff back here in Puerto Rico. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm invited for a part. If anyone ever, like, if anyone watching this right now, how many viewers we have, comes to Puerto Rico, let me know we're going to eat. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you guys, Andres, Andres always has food on the mind. Joanna said she's looking forward to pumpkin pie. Kate, what are you most looking forward to for the holidays? Well, my sons, I mentioned also do maple sugaring. Um, they and their dad have an 85 acre choose and cut Christmas tree farm in Vermont outside of Stowe. And so tree season literally starts tomorrow. And um, I love going out there because I know a lot of people, but people go out and tag a tree or cut their own tree. And um, I've never had a fake tree in my life. That would wow. be like sacrilege. <laughs> I love that. Oh my gosh. That, yeah, just the smell of a Christmas tree is like. People come out, people come out with their kids and whatever, and they go out and they walk and they hike. And, and then they're, I'm at the tree farm. They've got like tractors with hay wagons that go out and then people can cut their tree with their own, with us. We provide saws and then bring it back on the wagon and, and the kids love it and get cider or candy cane or whatever. So it's fun. Very, I know it sounds very courier and I've, so, but um, it's, it's so fun. People come from all over New England to get their trees there. Oh, that's so lovely. And Chad just brought up a great comment that is very on point. That's like, this is Andres's brand in a comment <laughs> is what's for lunch. And have you heard this bad bunny song? <laughs> it would not be a now and then episode if we didn't mention bad bunny. We hadn't mentioned bad bunny yet. Hashtag not sponsored. We're waiting for Bad Bunny to find out about Now and Them, to reach out, to offer to make a specific Now and Them intro. We're, I mean, you know, we're, we're mentioning him on quite literally every episode. So we're just waiting for that sponsorship to just roll right in any day now. There any you go. Now. So <laughs> funny that you mentioned that. I, I, I don't know um, if Olivia is the one behind the the text right now yeah she just said i got you Olivia Smith. so i sent her this morning it was 7 15 my time 7 14 a.m my time so 6 14 a.m her time and i sent her uh, a post from apple music that they were recognizing bad, bad bunny as the artist of the year i'm like i don't care 6 a.m for her i'll just send it over her way so just as recent as today at 6 15 a.m i was just messaging olivia about bad bunny <laughs> I have no idea what Bad Bunny is, so I'm lost. Oh my God! <laughs> uh, Andre, you'll have to. You you gave us things that we're gonna have to YouTube after the show. You your assignment is to just YouTube Bad Bunny, Andreas. If you want to DM Kate after, you can give her your preferred song <laughs> yeah. that you think she should be listening to. But Bad Bunny is Andreas's favorite <laughs> musical <Okay>. artist. <laughs> 
<laughs> so um, <laughs> we've got a fun little giveaway for you guys. Chad? Oh. Is it me talking about it or who's talking about it? Chad usually rolls. Chad oh. usually rolls a little a little jingle for us, but that's okay. We don't have to do that this time. <laughs> so we have a fun giveaway for you guys. We are going to give away thirty minutes of consulting time with Kate. So we are going to pick a random lucky winner in the comments. So Chad, if you will pull up some of these comments that we have, you guys make sure to chime in right now because we're going to scroll through and pick a random person to win. Chad's scrolling, he's scrolling. And Monica. <laughs> Monica is the lucky winner. So Monica, if you are watching, make sure to comment right now. Otherwise we will reach out to you to connect you. And Kate, you won 30 minutes of time. You can ask Kate all of your questions about LinkedIn. Yep, she some 30 minutes on Zoom. 30 minutes on Zoom, get some insight of as to how you can start to use creator mode to really expand your reach and just take advantage. So congratulations, Monica. Thanks so much for tuning in and watching. And we have a great show for you guys next month. So next month, we are back with our regularly scheduled programming, which means we will be live on the first Thursday of the month, which will be December 1st. So we're going to start December off really strong. We have the amazing Rich Brooks coming on as our special guest. Rich is going to talk all about what makes you remarkable. So make sure to mark your calendar December 1st. Thursday, 3.30 p.m. We will have Rich on. Super excited to have him. He also spoke at Social Media Week Lima 2022. So you guys, make sure if you want to get your tickets before we increase the prices, go to sociallima.com. You can get your tickets today to secure your spot for the most fun social media conference that you can attend. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Kate, thank you for joining us. It was so oh, fun. You're so welcome. You. Thank you for having me.